I'm enjoying here feeding early morning's breakfast for our goats. This is the advantage if you are going to cage your goats because you can feed them early in the morning. Unlike pasturing them, we have to wait for the sun to rise and then wait until the grasses will dry up before you can release them to the field. Because it's not really good to pasture our goats in the field because they might eat the early morning swarm that will tremendously affect their health. Their stomach will become bloated because of this worm. I find it very practical when you adapt the system such as the cut and feed, meaning you will cut the napiers and then feed them. Because if you will pasture the goats right here, they will damage the entire area, meaning they will damage the sources of food, which are these napiers. It's been my experience that when they are allowed to room around and we will pasture them here, they will damage the napiers. It is somehow detrimental to our food sources because it will take time before this napier can grow. So if we will just cut and have a selective harvest of the napier, then you will not run short of the food. You look at here, the vastness of our source, it can feed even thousands of goats as long as we will adapt the cut and feed system. So here, as early as six o'clock, they're already eating their breakfast. And you will see here that we have dried napiers. And these dried napiers were cut yesterday for today's breakfast. And I can sense that we will really become successful with this project. So we will feed them now here. In my earlier videos, I said that we will start slow with this goat farming because we wanted to establish a good system and then as soon as we can establish a system that's effective and that's the time that we will elevate our goat farming. What I mean when I say elevate is to acquire some good breeds of goats like this uh, pure breed of Boer type and this Anglonobian. And I am so happy that this goat farming will not actually entail big capital. Of course, except for the housing. Well, of course, we have to invest capital about the housing. But if you will finish investing the housing, then that's the time that you will reap the fruits because these goats are just prolific. They can born babies up to two or three. That's why I said that I'm so excited about this goat farming because it will address the food security issues and then it will also allow us to massively produce them without spending too much money for the food. Guys, we are on the 80% completion of our goat house. I just made the first cubicle because I really wanted to you know, put our goats here so that they will not be endangered of being beaten by the snakes. So guys, this is the landing and then over here would be the stairs so that our goats can also step down or step up and get inside the cage. So this is the second batch of our bitter melon and you will see that we designed another method of this release. You'll see this bamboo, we just tie this up and then allow these uh, stems to crawl up here 
and this is actually good much more better than using the cord we intend to have massive of this in fact we already have seeds uh, yesterday we were able to you know get some ripe bitter melon and we were able also to get some seeds for our future uh, plantation and uh, this is actually now good because we know that the seeds that we actually use are good seeds so they already have flowers and we expect that by the next couple of weeks we can harvest again our bitter melon and you will see that there are plenty of fruits right here of our white squash and today we will allow our staff to do the harvest you know i already have made more than a hundred uh, fruits from this plantation alone and there are smaller fruits coming more than a hundreds that are uh, going to be harvested soon but today our staff will do the harvest and then we will also make some additional plantation here of our water spinach we have this uh, upland water spinach we call this the imelda uh, variety and this is what i would like to propagate here and then of course we will not forget about the azola but i'm still trying to locate where is the possible place for our azola maybe over there would be the best we will just put them inside the net so that the ducks could not destroy them so this is now what we call the integrated farming up above is the vegetable providing shades to our tilapia down here and then right there we also have water spinach we have white squash and then bitter melon and then maybe this portion here we will plant some red squash and then watermelon many more that are actually very suitable for this area So this is the fruits of our labor. So if we will plant, then of course we will do the harvest. If we don't plant, then we cannot expect that we can do harvest. So by planting and of course by doing such great effort, we can also do great harvest. And you look at this. These are the fruits of hard work. And this is actually the fourth harvest that if I can recall it right we already have some 150 fruits that are freshly harvested from the farm and if you will multiply that to 20 or 30 pesos that's already an income that would sustain for the other needs of the farm such as the feeds and the vitamins for our animals You know, we have so many plants right here. So the plan is to elevate this one. And then, of course, we will put bamboos for the trees of our vegetables. That's why I said we can still plant here. We can utilize the place. We will just use the plant box because we cannot plant the seeds directly right here because it's water. So we will just put the plant box just the same method with what we had done with the white squash and the bitter melon. We'll put some pail or drums right here and then plant 
this watermelon will crawl up over there and we will harvest the fruits. These are future plants and I think this is doable because we already have tried this one and we are successful. I hope guys that you were encouraged with what we have done here and I hope also that you will continue to support us, will continue to like and share our videos and if you are not subscribed to this channel, may I humbly invite you to please subscribe and uh, hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos regularly and these videos are informative, just very challenging and very exciting videos that will entertain you, not only will entertain you but it will give you some knowledge and techniques in so far as farming is concerned. I would like to see you in the next upload only here at Dexter's World.